I want to thank uh, Police Commissioner Kelly for joining me today to announce the latest initiative of the NYPD in my office to suppress gang activity in Brooklyn. We're joined also by Chief Izzo, the chief of uh, OCCB. Today we announced four separate indictments charging, and, uh, and with me, by the way, uh, is uh, Lance Ogis, who is my counsel, who supervises the uh, gang bureau. Deanna Rodriguez is the chief of the bureau. Ed Carroll is the executive assistant DA, uh, second in charge. Mike Perkins is the first deputy chief of the gang bureau. And Lauren Ortiz, uh, assistant district attorney. And Mike Perkins and Lauren will be the trial lawyers. Um, today we announced four separate indictments charging 49 gang members with multiple felonies carrying substantial prison sentences for those convicted. Most of them have been apprehended and have been held in either very high bail or no bail. Um, for several years, two groups of street thugs who are members of VCG were very crispy gangsters, if you believe that, that's their name. And the rock stars have carried on a feud with escalating violence, which involved 12 shootings, one resulting in the wounding of a 10-year-old boy who was shot in the neck while watching television in his family's apartment. The feud also led to three homicides. This warlike rivalry began on September 6, 2009 when it's alleged that rock star gang member Michael Allen Reed, known as Skills with a Z, shot and killed VCG gang member Taquan Crandall, who was known as Tewis. For the next three years, the rock stars and VCG feud terrorized parts of the East New York community as they recklessly shot at each other in crowded parks and on busy streets with no regard for innocent bystanders. The Rockstars gang claimed the Linden Houses and Miller Park as their territory, while the VCG gang claimed Pennsylvania and Livonia Avenues to Glenmore Avenue as their territory. And the maps over there show the areas that they, they claim to control. Both gangs used Facebook, and you'll see examples of that, to taunt each other. Uh, after the murder of three members of the VCG gang, the Rockstars posted, quote, the rock stars are up 3-0, end quote. Two indictments unsealed today charge various rock star members with murder in the second degree for the murder of three VCG members. The other two indictments charge VCG members for violently retaliating against the rock stars. For example, VCG member Darnell Jones shot at a rock star member early in the morning of May 14, 2012, missing him and instead striking an innocent bystander. The indictments against the VCG members charged them in four of the 12 shootings through matching ballistics evidence. On November 15, 2011, for example, we allege that VCG gang member Marcus Worrell attempted to murder a rock star gang member whom he believed was responsible for the murder of a VCG member. The ballistics recovered from this crime scene matched the ballistics recovered from two other incidents where rock stars were shot. On November 30, 2011, VCG gang member Sean Franks was arrested for gang possession in Manhattan. This gun matched ballistics from a crime scene involving rock star members, um, a rock star member who was shot in the stomach on November 10, 2011 in Brooklyn. We're all well aware of how these crews use social media to promote their gangs and criminal activity. What was most disturbing in this investigation was the use of social media to intimidate victims and witnesses. Rockstar and VCG gang members work together by posting orders of protection issued to victims on Facebook and labeling them snitches. Their message was very clear. You cooperate with law enforcement about our gang activity, and you'll face serious consequences. The intimidation of witnesses was not limited to their use of social media. In a recorded phone call from Rikers Island, rock star leader Geraldo Menia called, VC, called VCG leader Brandon Matos and agreed that any cooperating witness or victim would be, quote, taken care of, end quote, by their respective gangs. 
All of the defendants in these four indictments are charged with conspiracy in the second degree and face eight and a third to 25 years upon conviction. The defendants who are over the, eight, the age of 18 face conspiracy in the first degree. And if they're convicted, they face up to 25 years in prison. There are 27 defendants in this, these indictments who are over the age of 18. The investigation was, of the two gangs was conducted uh, by a, a great bunch of investigative detectives and chiefs, NYPD Chief Essek of Brooklyn North Patrol, Deputy Chief Teresa Shortell is with us, uh, Detective John Holland, both of the Brooklyn North Gang Squad and the other uh, detectives and bosses who did such a great job are mentioned in the, uh, in the release, and I'm sure uh, Commissioner Kelly will mention them. The, the case is being prosecuted, as I said, by Assistant District Attorney Lauren Ortiz and First Deputy Bureau Chief Mike Perkins of the Gang Bureau. For me, <laughs> the, the sad part is that there are so many programs for these kids that we have in Brooklyn uh, that if they had taken advantage of them, they would not be facing serious jail time, which is going to keep them until uh, they're relatively old. Uh, but, you know, they play by their rules, they're going to play by our rules. I really want to thank uh, all of the uh, officers here for their tenacious work in this case and demonstrated just uh, uh, tremendous police work. And because of uh, these individuals' uh, in, uh, insatiable desire to brag about what they did, to brag about their murderous acts and the use of Facebook, as the district attorney said, uh, these investigators were able to draw a virtual map of their uh, activities and bring them to well-deserving uh, uh, justice. Uh, now, for example, after the VCG member was beaten to death by up to 20 members of the Rockstars gang, one of his assailants posted a photograph of himself wearing the victim's belt and watch uh, with the taunting message, quote, I can't give it back to you. You can't walk no more. Five months later, the VCGs retaliated by abducting a 16-year-old rock star associates from Gershwin Park. They held him down and they shot him in both legs. So this kind of tit-for-tat brutality among teens was settled in neighborhoods generations ago by fistfights. But now they're using guns. Uh, so social media is another new ingredient uh, and certainly often uh, used to add fuel to the fire. Uh, for example, one gang member will post a photograph of himself in front of a rival's apartment house or post surveillance photographs of rivals who they threaten to kill next. In bragging about the three prior killings that the DA mentioned, one such post said, we saw your boy EJ caught him slipping, almost made it four to nothing. A reference to the fact that members of the rock stars had already killed three of VCG members. They also used social media to intimidate informants. Again, as the district attorney said, they would post copies of, on Facebook of orders of protection that identified complainants. Going as far as, to, as you heard, I think we're going to play a, a telephone call. We're not going to play a telephone call. Okay. You might have heard in the telephone call. Uh, <clears throat> one gang leader. We went them to hear it first. I'm sorry? <laughs> we want them to hear it first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so the gang leader assured his rival that uh, uh, he would punish uh, his own gang members if they complained to the, uh, to the authorities. So the casualties of these petty rivalries are not limited to the perpetrators themselves, unfortunately. Again, as was said, as a result of shooting between these two groups in the last couple of years, a 10-year-old boy was shot by a stray round as he watched cartoons inside his apartment. A 20-year-old man was shot stepping off a bus on his way home from work. And an off-duty police officer stopping at a McDonald's was shot in a crossfire between the rock stars and VCG. Uh, and a 17-year-old girl who had the temerity to refuse a rock star's demand to help set up a shooting of a VCG was herself shot three times in the face as she left the Wortman houses on her way to school. She was left a quadriplegic as a result. 
Now, while Facebook and YouTube helped the gangs communicate, they also led the, to their demise. Uh, so did good old-fashioned police work, including stop, question, and frisk. For example, a 16-year-old stopped in connection with suspected fair beating in Manhattan was found to be in possession of a loaded 9mm handgun that had been used in a shooting in East New York the week before. Another 16-year-old uh, who matched the description of someone seen taking a gun out of a backpack prior to a shooting was stopped and found to be in possession of a loaded 25 caliber firearm. It was the same gun used in the shooting that resulted in the wounding of the bystander getting off the bus. In another street stop, a 16-year-old was found in possession of a loaded 357 Magnum, a 17-year-old in possession of a loaded 38 caliber revolver. All of these teams were either VCGs or Rockstar members. We found during the course of the investigation that the gang members would often have girlfriends carry guns for them under the assumption that they'd be less likely to be stopped. They also stare so-called community guns in hiding places for the same reason. The last time District Attorney Hines and uh, myself were together here, uh, he mentioned how murders had fallen below 200 uh, in Brooklyn for the first time in 50 years. Right now, murders in Brooklyn are down another 23 percent and down 17 percent citywide and we're on a track to establish a, a new record low. After experiencing spikes in shootings in earlier this summer, the number of shooting victims in the city has also fallen. It's down 1 percent so far citywide and down 13 percent in Brooklyn. This is due in no small measure to the efforts of the people that you see here. So I want to commend all the members of the Brooklyn North Gang Squad, certainly again John Holland, uh, the case detective, for their outstanding work, as well as members of the 75th Precinct uh, Detective Squad, and of course uh, Prosecutor Joe Hines' office. And finally, uniform officers, including impact officers in the 75th Precinct, who work hard every day to make New York, East New York, that is, safer, and indeed New York City safer. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Commissioner. Any questions?